Hey guys, well as the title of this video says, being born a squib isn't really that bad. Well, I can imagine so. I think that squibs probably get the harshest life, or you could say have it most unfairly when comparing their situation to wizards and muggles. Not only are they treated as second class citizens and looked down upon by the majority of the magical community, it seems as if they struggle to define themselves in either world of which they choose to live in. Guys, in today's video I'm going to talk about some of the difficulties Squibs encounter and how it's very easy for them to feel such isolation due to being born from a magical background. So if you want to know everything there is to know about a Squibs life and their struggles then stick around guys and enjoy today's video from Harry Potter Folklore. For the purposes of this video guys, I'm going to quickly explain what a squib is. Now I know that many of you will know this already because anybody who watches this channel is a hardcore Harry Potter fan, but for the small few who don't, a squib is a magical person born to one or more magical parents but do not possess any magical ability for reasons unknown, most likely believed to be the magical gene laying dormant. Squibs can be born to any magical family, so it appears nobody or no family is exempt and that's no surprise really because by recent times nearly all of the magical families of Great Britain were somehow related to each other, either due to inbreeding or just due to the fact that there were a limited number of visiting families that remained in the community. Now depending on the family the squib is born into, things can happen differently. I always think of it as kind of a squib lottery because they can either be really lucky or really unlucky. Normally a squib is given a choice by his or her family. They can stay in the magical world, it's their entitlement. They're still magical, just not magically active, they've no ability, but magical blood is still within them. Or they can choose to live a muggle's life in the muggle world with a normal everyday job and I'm sure that there have been many who have made a success of it. But for those who wished to stay in the magical world it can be a little more difficult. They are looked upon as second class people, not worthy enough to be bestowed upon with the gifts of magic according to some. And it's that group of people that a squib would really wish to have no association with, never mind being born into, for there are certain types of families that are so horrified at the existence of squibs, let alone be related to them, that if it were the case, take the House of Black for example, who had several squibs in their line throughout the years, they would not only deny them a place within the family, but strike them from any existence or association with the family and the family name. Furthermore, they would cast them out, disowning them and leaving them to fend for themselves or possibly give them some amount of money to keep quiet and start a new life within the muggle world. Now it's gotta be difficult to be born into a family that look upon you in such a derogatory view. It certainly must take its toll on their mental health or at least their confidence, leaving them with little self value. So let's not focus on the families that disown squibs for now, let's look at the ones who don't disown them. Fair enough if the person decides to stay in the magical world for whatever reason, it's almost like them being within touching distance of something they can never have. They can't go to Hogwarts, they can't learn to perform magic, they are constantly surrounded by all things magical, their friends would be magical, while the friends that were permitted to befriend a squib. Now I can imagine there would at least be some sort of school for squibs within the magical world for those who chose to stay. But then it opens the question, who's going to teach them and what kind of education do they get? We've seen squibs like Arabella Fig who lives beside the Dursleys in the muggle world and keeps an eye on Harry Potter. Then we've got Mr. Argus Filch, the squib who chose to stay in the magical world and works as the Hogwarts caretaker. Now he's a man of severe resentment, resentment of his own situation and resentment of others prospering in abilities he feels he should have been born with. In fact he's so bitter, his only pleasure is making life more difficult for the students of Hogwarts and he strives to see the old methods of punishment return to Hogwarts with him in charge of discipline as it once used to be included 
within the role of caretaker. So secretly desperate to be able to practice magic in some way, Argus tried the quick spell course to see if he could learn even basic magic, but to no avail as he had no magical skills to begin with. Now this added failure may have hardened him even more against magical society. And speaking of society, squibs were thought so low of that the ministry didn't even register their births. It was entirely up to the parents to keep record as the child's existence did not matter to the magical community. There's also some examples of squibs from centuries back who are linked to fame. Isolde Sire, the famous founder of Ilvermorny's school of witchcraft and wizardry, gave birth to a daughter whom she named Martha. Martha was named after her paternal grandmother and while her twin sister Rhiannoch was magical, Martha was sadly not. Martha was the only one in the family to be born a squib and because of that she considered her upbringing at Ilvermorny to be very painful and difficult as she had to live there. Martha did go on to marry and lived her life happily as a nomad, distancing herself from magic completely. It's not all doom and gloom however, there's also the story of Angus Buchanan who was born a squib and despite never receiving a Hogwarts acceptance letter, actually made his way into the school in uniform. He got into the sorting ceremony and even got as far as the sorting hat before he was finally exposed as a squib. You see, in sheer desperation, Angus threw himself ahead of a girl whose name had been called and placed the hat upon his head himself. The horror of the moment when the hat announced kindly that the boy beneath it was a good hearted chap but no wizard would never be forgotten by those who witnessed it. Angus took the hat off and left the hall with tears streaming down his face. This had never happened before and it has never happened ever since. Angus being a squib caused him to become estranged from his family but as I said it's not all doom and gloom guys, especially with this case. Angus went on to write an inspirational book entitled My Life as a Squib. His book helped break the taboos of a squib culture in wizarding society. Angus ended up becoming a star in the muggle sport of rugby and his sporting talents became so well known within the wizarding world that wizard kind fell in love with his inspirational book, not to mention developing an odd interest in rugby also. Despite being hidden and shunned by the magical world for so long, even after people like Angus made a success of his life, there were squibs who wanted to make a success of their own lives too, but not in the muggle world. They wanted fair opportunities for employment within the wizarding world and they didn't want to be viewed as beneath the modern wizard. Therefore dozens of squibs rallied together and started protests and marches for squib rights which actually drew quite a lot of attention. However, it wasn't all good attention. These protests drew out pure blood fanatics who were only looking for reasons to eradicate more squibs out of existence and it did result in many squibs being killed. The ministry eventually shut the protest rallies down and forbid any more to happen. So guys, in conclusion, is being born a squib really that bad? Well, if you ask me, yeah, it kinda is. It could be better to not have known magic existed and live a muggle life than to be within touching distance, touching reach of magic and never being able to practice it. Not only that, be looked down upon as a second class citizen. So what do you guys think? Would you choose a life as a squib or would you rather have never known magic existed? Guys, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.